you've been watching lately, you already know how I feel about the Biden administration's response to Roe v. Wade being overturned, or lack thereof, I should say. I'm incredibly angered and frustrated by the Biden administration's refusal to take meaningful action. And I mean, my expectations were very low. They were below the floor, but he even managed to surprise me with the way that he's handled this situation. And I'm not alone because Democrats agree 71% of Americans do not want Biden to seek a second term, even though he refuses to step down and announce that he'll only be running for one term. And he's even lost Deborah Messing. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a signal as to how bad he's doing. He lost Deborah Messing. Now, yes, that Deborah Messing, the celebrity. Now, you may be wondering, why do we care what Deborah Messing thinks? Well, because she has been one of the most vocal and loyal defenders of the Democratic Party. And even if you, in so much as tepidly pointed out some critiques that you had with Biden in 2020, she was right there to scold you, scold you back into place. But even Deborah Messing a worshiper of the Democratic Party is saying, this is unbelievable. So as CNN's Edward Isaac Dovere reports, Deborah Messing was fed up. The former Will and Grace star was among dozens of celebrity Democratic supporters and activists who joined a call with White House aides last Monday to discuss the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. The mood was fatalistic, according to three people on the call, which was also co-organized by the advocacy group Build Back Better Together. Messing said she'd gotten Joe Biden elected and wanted to know why she was being asked to do anything at all, yelling that there didn't even seem a point to vote. Others wondered why the call was happening. The call, three days after the decision eliminating federal abortion rights, encapsulates the overwhelming sense of frustration among Democrats with Biden. It offers a new window into what many in the president's party describe as a mismanagement permeating the White House. Top Democrats complain the president isn't acting with, or perhaps is even capable of, the urgency the moment demands. Rudderless, aimless, and hopeless is how one member of Congress described the White House. Two dozen leading Democratic politicians and operatives, as well as several within the West Wing, tell CNN they feel this goes deeper than questions of ideology and posture. Instead, they say it gets to questions of basic management. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. It's not just that he refuses to do anything, but... The issue stems deeper than that. He insists that the only solution, the one true solution, is to vote. When voters worked very hard to give Democrats the majority that they have, is it ideal? No. You currently don't have the numbers needed to get rid of the filibuster or create an exception to the filibuster to codify Roe v. Wade. But if Biden were a leader, he wouldn't just accept that he doesn't have the numbers. He'd do what LBJ did to pass the Civil Rights Act. You use carrots, sticks, you make deals, you bargain, you use your bully pulpit. But Biden is just saying, mm, not going to do anything. Sorry, you've got to give us more seats. I mean, with your behavior, there's no guarantee that even if you expand your majority, you're going to do anything because you told voters that electing John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock in Georgia would give you the numbers that you need to take action. But you're still not really delivering. Build Back Better failed your core agenda item. And it's not just that Biden's response here has been feckless and horrible, but he's literally assisting the forced birthers. He's giving a forced birther a lifetime appointment to a federal court because of some deal that he struck with Mitch McConnell. So it's not just that he refuses to defend us as we lose our civil rights and civil liberties, but he is assisting the people who are doing harm to us, who are taking away our civil rights and civil liberties. And Roe hasn't even been gone for two weeks, and it's already been the disaster that we all said it would be. A 10-year-old in Ohio was denied an abortion. And as Greg Sargent points out, medical professionals in Louisiana just went on record saying the state's abortion ban will force them to choose between avoiding prosecution and and treating pregnant women in grave medical danger. So it hasn't been that long, and we're seeing stories where doctors are literally forced to choose between life and lawsuits, where they're forcing women with egg topic pregnancies to wait while they call lawyers and determine whether or not it's legal to save that woman's life. And Biden isn't just refusing to take action. He's uh, saying, let me nominate this forced birther to... Uh, a federal position. This is why people are, people are outraged. This is why you're losing loyalists even, like Deborah Messing. Even she can see how outrageous the Biden administration's response has been. And I can't stop thinking about the answer to the question about how hard people worked 
uh, you know, to give Democrats this majority. Shouldn't you act now when VP Harris said this? You're saying now the president said that this fall Roe is on the ballot. But what do you say to Democratic voters who argue, wait a minute, we worked really hard to elect a Democratic president yeah. and vice president, yeah. Democratic-led House, yeah. a Democratic-led Senate. Do it now. But do what now? I, what now? I mean, we, we need, we, listen, what we did, we extended the child tax credit for the well, first I'm year. Well, I'm sorry, when I say do right? what, yeah. do it now, yeah. act uh, legislatively to make abortion rights legal. We feel the same way. It, do it now. Congress needs to do it now in terms of permanently putting in place a, a, a clear indication that it is the law of the land that women have the ability and the right to make decisions about their reproductive care, and the government does not have the right to make those decisions for a woman. I just can't get that video out of my mind because it's it's so it's so crazy. Like it's almost like a parody, right? That's the vice president of the United States saying, do what now? When they have a majority, again, slim majority, it's going to be really difficult to try to get the votes that you need. But you don't just accept, oh, we don't have the numbers, vote harder. You fight. You don't accept your fate. I mean, all polls are showing that the Republican Party is going to expand their majority. And you're not even going to try. You're just going to cross your fingers and hope you get more votes. It's truly ridiculous. As Mark Joseph Stern put it, if two weeks ago you had told me that Biden's response to Roe's reversal would be this feckless and torpid and pathetic, I wouldn't have believed you. It's a total abdication of leadership on an issue that sits at the heart of the Democratic Party. It's just appalling. Exactly. And it feels even worse knowing that Democrats had already pre-written emails, fundraising emails, anticipating the reversal of Roe rather than formulating an action plan. They're fundraising. They're saying vote. And they've raised millions upon millions of dollars off of this. But for what? What's your action plan? What are you going to do besides saying, I'm going to codify Roe? Because there's nothing stopping this rogue Supreme Court from deeming Roe unconstitutional in the event you codify it into law, in the unlikely event you codify it into law. So what's the plan of action to protect abortion rights long term? I mean, are they talking about expanding the court? Biden shot that down. Are they talking about Supreme Court reform at all? Term limits? No. So what's the plan to protect Roe v. Wade? Well, the plan is to vote and wait. Wait decades for the Supreme Court makeup to change, hopefully, in the Democratic Party's favor so they can appoint new justices. Meanwhile, thousands of women are literally going to die because Roe has been overturned. So this is why people are frustrated with the Biden administration. This is why people want him to step down and not run for a second term because they've proven they don't have what it takes to be leaders. Biden has proven that he doesn't have the capacity to meet this moment. But yet he's irked, according to a New York Times article, that people keep asking him, are you going to run again in 2024? Biden, as I said before, it's not that we are curious if you're going to run again. It's genuinely shocking to think that you would seek a second term when so many Americans are crying out for you to do something or go away. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.